Hey everyone. So at the end of each month, as of last month, I depart from my usual content of sharing New York City tips and trivia to share some of my favorite New York things from the past month. I know this veers into the lifestyle influencer territory, but don't worry. Everything I talk about will be related to New York City. So if you're willing to indulge me, let's go into my New York City monthly favorites for August 2022. Favorite New York cafe of the month? 10,000 Coffee. This place had piqued my curiosity for a while because I had heard that it was an Australian brand and that they supposedly had the best coffee ever. Like one sip and you'll be in coffee heaven. That's how much they hyped it up. And it turns out they were right. I went into 10,000 Coffee's location near Bryant Park as a person pretty much indifferent to coffee. And I came out floating on a foamy, creamy, caffeinated cloud. But I can't speak for the whole drink menu. I just had the espresso cream latte, but that was the best latte I ever had. It wasn't just a drink. It was like a symphony of chocolatey, creamy deliciousness. And it's ruined lattes for me. No latte is ever going to compare to that. So if you do try it, keep that in mind. You will be ruined. <laughs> Favorite NYC place of the month, Queens County Farm Museum. Don't let the word museum throw you off. Despite this being a historic landmark, Queens County Farm Museum is a fully functional farm on the eastern edge of Queens. I know, a farm in New York City. This farm has been around since the 1600s, making it the oldest continuously farm land left in New York City. But what blew my mind is that it's surrounded by a regular residential neighborhood. It's like house, house, farm, house, house. <laughs> But you forget about the neighborhood completely once you pass through the farm's gates and you see the red farmhouse, you see the crops, you see the livestock, and visitors are welcome to wander around the farm. It's really family friendly and for a small fee, I think it's like three bucks or so, you can feed the goats and the sheep and I think for five bucks you can take a hayride. So between this and going to Governor's Island, I think this was the best experience I had all summer. I felt like a little kid. I was like grinning all around the place. I looked like a fool, but I will not rest until everyone I knows, my bad, everyone I know <laughs> goes to Queens County Farm Museum because uh, it's an amazing experience. Favorite NYC book of the month, Our Subway Baby by Peter Mercurio, illustrated by Leo Espinoza. Our Subway Baby is the cutest, most heartwarming book, and it's even more touching when you realize that it's based on a true story. Back in August of 2000, this guy Danny Stewart found a newborn baby abandoned in the 14th Street subway station on the ACE line. Not that that last part really matters, but just so you know, ACE line. He and his partner Pete called the cops, the baby's taken to the hospital, you'd think that'd be the end of the story. But three months later, Danny is called to give a testimony about the incident, and the judge suddenly asks him, hey, would you be interested in adopting this baby? And he says yes, and Danny and Pete's lives are changed just like that. So there's more to the story that I won't give away because I want you to read it for yourself, but Peter Mercurio is the other dad, and he turned the family story into a children's book with spot-on illustrations. Between the illustrations and the story itself, you're going to end up tearing up just a little bit, or maybe a lot. Favorite NYC article of the month, The Voice of New York is Drill by Camille Squires. I know some of you are going to look at me funny for choosing this article, and I'll admit that before reading this piece, I had my own boomery preconceived notions about drill music. It's still not my preferred style of rap, but the article makes you sympathetic to the kids in New York creating this music. Most of them aren't violent, they aren't criminals, they're just kids using music to express themselves and process the world around them and hopefully make it big enough to lift themselves and their friends out of poverty. And this article does a really good job capturing their perspective with direct quotes from, I think, 19 of New York's biggest drill rappers. It also goes into how New York drill music is different from other areas drill music and how the current mayor seems a little wary of them, to say the least. Plus, there's a whole playlist at the end of the article with songs from each of the rappers interviewed, so you can actually hear what this sounds like. Of course, I'll leave the link for you in the description, and you'll be able to check it out yourself. Favorite NYC podcast of the month, 
First Agent Podcast. The name alone lets you know that you're in for a treat. This podcast is hosted by Ben and Lindsay, who are a couple of Asian American millennials giving their worst opinion on all things Asian. They're based in Queens, so there's that New York connection. And I started listening to them earlier in August because I wanted to expand my perspective and diversify the media that I consume. But every time I put on one of their episodes, I end up listening to them for hours because these guys are hilarious. I can't listen to this anymore when I'm on the street because I'm not able to hold in my laughter and then people look at me weird. So keep that in mind if you check them out. You'll be kikiing all over the place. Don't say I didn't warn you. But it is so worth it because these guys are really underrated and they deserve a massive following. Favorite NYC video of the month. Architect Explores New York City's Greenwich Village by Architectural Digest. If you know me, you know I love looking at other people's houses. The interiors, the exteriors, the architecture, love it all. And if you're into that too, you'll like this video from AD. They have an architect, Nicholas Potts, go around Greenwich Village pointing out the architectural details and how you can tell if a house was built in the 1800s or the 1900s based on the orientation of the brick. He also talks about the Wetterman House, that place that went kaboom in 1970. And I love that he shows you how to read the neighborhood instead of saying, you know, this is a pretty house, that's a pretty house. So I'm gonna link that video for you in the description and I'll also embed it into the companion blog post for this video. Reminder, I have a blog with over 100 articles on New York City tips and trivia and life here. So if you like my videos, then you'll love my website and my Instagram, and my TikTok. So just follow me everywhere. <laughs> anyway, favorite thing I learned about New York this month. So when I was working on my Tribeca neighborhood guide, which you can find on my blog, I learned the story of the Newtopian Embassy at 1 White Street. This is just down the street from the Ghostbusters headquarters. Unrelated, but it's a cool thing to know. Anyway. Newtopia was a conceptual country created by John Lennon and Yoko Ono in 1973 because John Lennon was facing deportation after the U.S. denied his application for permanent residency. So John and Yoko were like, if we create this country, Newtopia, and make ourselves the ambassadors, John would have diplomatic immunity and not be deported. And that was interesting reasoning, but I guess it kind of worked because... Lenin's deportation ruling was overturned in 1975, two years later. He probably also had some really good lawyers fighting for him too. But after 1975, Lenin stopped mentioning Newtopia, and the building that was supposed to be the embassy is now this super fancy pants restaurant. So that was a cool thing I learned this month, and now I'm passing that on to you. So I hope that you enjoyed this edition of my New York City Monthly Favorites. I hope that you learned something and that I gave you some useful recommendations to check out. If you have any recommendations for me, just leave them in the comments. Or if you just want to let me know that you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And I'll see you next week with more New York City tips and trivia. Bye-bye.